Hello everyone, my name is Matt Sensorolo and I'm the owner and managing partner here at Unique Accounting. If this is your first time watching our con, thank you for finding and listening to us. If you've watched our stuff before, thank you for continuing to tune into our channel. As always, you can learn more about us by visiting our website, wwwu accountingcom While you're there, I recommend you check out our blog and also visit our downloadable guides page where you can download some free content. And as always, I got a beverage with me. So if you're wondering what I'm drinking today, no, it's not vodka. I just got done running. So I'm drinking good old fashioned water. My cup bears a hashtag make today count. This is a slogan for my best friends foundation. It's very dear and close personal not-for-profit that I'm a board member of. If you or anyone you know in your life is suffering from the impacts of cancer, there'll be a link to the form at the end of this video that you can click on to fill out so we can help you guys out. Today's topic is part number three in our five-part series, Zero versus QBO, why after 15 years we made the switch to zero. And reason number three is an important one, and it's customized financials. So let's talk about the difference between canned reporting versus custom versus customizing. So when you get a software, it typically comes with what we call canned reporting, which is standard reports. So you're gonna get a software that's got a balance sheet, PL, and maybe 10 other reports, 20, 30. That way, like as a business owner, you wanna run a report, it's format for you, it's there, you just click it, run it, and you can move on. So in this area, like QuickBooks wins hands down because they have tons of canned reporting. It's a good and bad thing. It's good because there's so much to choose from and you don't have to like customize it and edit it. However, it is a lot to choose from and I know business owners often get to the reporting section and get lost in it because there's so much. Zero, on the other hand, has limited templates. They do add more each year, but they are behind in QuickBooks in terms of this area. But where Zero excels, is in the custom financial reporting as opposed to the customized reporting you can do in QuickBooks. So let's talk about the difference between custom and customizing. So when I'm talking about custom, I'm thinking like free range, blank canvas, right? You go up, blank board, you can draw whatever you want. Whereas customizing, I think of something exists already, right? There's an existing structure, you're just tweaking it. Drawing's already there, you're just gonna color it in now, right? But you can't draw the structure of what the, uh, the picture was. To give a further illustration of this, I'm gonna talk about something a lot of people relate to, which is home building. I don't know if you've ever gotten to do it, I haven't, but you can build a custom home. And a custom home is exactly how it sounds. You work with a home builder and an architect, and they draw exactly what you want, design it the way you want to whatever your heart content is. Got full freedom to build the house of your dreams. Whereas a customized home, if you think of like the large home builders out there, those builders give you, you know, three to five models to pick from because they said, here's what we're building. Here's the structure, here's the core. You just tweak what you like about it. Which means like you're going to tweak the countertops, the flooring, right? But you don't get to dictate how the house is organized. So that's the same thing with the custom versus customized reporting. QBO, they're like the large home builder. So they got all these canned reportings. They have these core structure of templates all ready for you. And then you can customize it. But when you customize it, it's not like changing really the way it looks. It's more of like filtering the report they have and maybe being able to add some columns. But you don't get to like change the structure of the rows and formulas and things like that. Whereas in Zero, they're like the custom home builder. It's a blank canvas. So yes, they got some templates there, but when you open up a template, if you're like, I wanna tweak this, you can actually hit edit the layout and go change it. And I'll actually pull up an example of it. So in the rows, you can change where the rows appear, how they're grouped, the naming of the rows, and then you can throw in custom formulas to do specific math you wanna do. And same thing with the columns, okay? You can name the columns the way you wanna name it. You can throw in custom date ranges, budget columns, variance columns, percent columns. If you're an accountant and you're looking to use this for your clients, there is a column called notes. So that way you can run a PL for your client and type in notes. So that way, like your thoughts are there for them. You can also add in random text and also uh, schedules into, into the editor. So let me share my screen. Really so quick. In zero, this is a financial. I know it's blank right now. It's just a template. So if you come down after you run the PL and you hit edit layout, you'll come into the actual like structure of the financials and you can come in and change how things are. So for instance, like the sale of Beanie Babies, this was a, a joke I was doing with the client. So we got sales revenue here. Let's say you got revenue, sales of goods and sales. And you're like, you know what? I don't wanna see all the revenue together. Like I wanna break out this cause this is like our sales is like different. Like the revenue we're doing consulting revenue, but this we're actually selling for some reason, some good. And then if you wanna see the details of it, you can leave it like that or you can collapse it 
just to show the total for that category. And then if your client's like, you know what, let's break that out separately. We just drag and drop. And now we've got revenue, we got our own category separated. Same thing for cost of goods sold. You can again, group things the way you want. You can come in at any time and name the na uh, name it the way you want. Down here, I've got some custom formulas. You'll see in our PL, when we collapse these, I've got revenue, and then these are all direct costs. And then I have our margin before labor. And then we show labor, and then we do margin after labor. It's just the way we analyze businesses. In here, you can come in and insert and do custom formulas. And the reason why the list is small is it's, you can do math with anything that's above it in the list here. So if you want to run a course of formula, like you're a restaurant and you have food revenue, beverage revenue, and you have food cost, beverage cost, you could do food cost as a percentage of food revenue and beverage cost as a per percentage of beverage revenue right here. Whereas in most softwares, you just get percent of revenue as a column, but that's a percent of total revenue, not its revenue segment. And again, like it's just easy, like let's say this needs to be here, you just drag and drop it. Um, you can move things around, group it the way you want, name it the way you want. You get to choose what date ranges you want to show up in the report, the way you want to be named. One of your P&Ls has like a Christmas season, your seasonality business, you can do that. You can add in the date columns, you can add in a budget column for the period of time you want. So you say date range budget, you want uh, year to date, and then you could come in and say, let's do a variance and let's do year to date minus my budget year to date to get a variance budget versus actual. You can add in uh, formulas to do like percentages and things like that. Again, that note column I brought up, it's really only relevant for advisors. Or let's say you're a business owner and you have outside investors and you want to put notes in that you're going to deliver those financials to, you could put a note column in, put your thoughts in so that way you're ready for your presentation with them, as well as percentages and uh, variances. Here you could add a schedule in, which basically like this is a schedule and you could do your own mini schedule. So like maybe the schedule would be instead of doing a total cost of sales, you could do a schedule with the breakout of all the cost of goods sold items so that we could see the details. So that's just an example of why we love Zero. The cut the ability to just create the report in a way that's meaningful for clients because all industries are different. So I kind of talked about restaurant as an example. So I'll go over some, some examples. So in restaurants and bars, like they're really concerned about percentages of food costs for food sales and beverage costs for beverage sales. They also group things differently in the P&L in terms of like prime costs, which is kind of like cost gets sold, and then controllable versus non-controllable expenses. Again, like you can't run a P&L like that in QBO, but you can in zero. Same thing for heavy sales-based organizations. So I've worked with a lot of clients that have rely on salespeople to sell their product. In a company like that, the money the owner has left over to run their business is the money after their revenue, after their cost gets sold, after their selling expenses, because they have to pay their commission people. And so in zero, you can segregate the P&L that way. You can create revenue, cost gets sold with the margin, then group all your selling expenses together with that leftover margin, which is like the margin left over to operations, whereas you can't run that formula in QuickBooks Online. Bank and lenders are another un unique industry where where they group revenue expenses together in the same area because like when they charge interest on a loan they're making interest income however they also have to borrow the money themselves to lend it out to you so they're also paying interest so in that p l you can group interest revenue interest expense net interest income same thing for bank fees and commissions you can group those together and then uh not-for-profits is another good example um, not-for-profits have a lot of like programs and services that they run instead of having columns for all those you can make rows of like program number one program number two where within each program it's the revenue costs net income and kind of break it out program by program that way instead of a column format thanks for listening to reason number three on why we prefer zero over qbo stay tuned for reasons four and five if you appreciate our advice please remember to like our video and subscribe to our channel for future content until then remember don't conform stay unique